Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Fleekazoid Podcast. Today's episode is my beef with dating apps, why I canceled dating apps. Today's episode is going to give hater ass vibes, and I'm sorry for that. No, seriously, like, very negative, very angsty, um, almost borderline alpha female. So, uh, yeah, you've been warned. If you are looking for feel-good therapy, this is not the podcast episode. However, if you are looking for ranting content, this is your episode. Enjoy! Before we dissect this topic, I need to address the group of girls who act like I'm kicking off their crutches and stomping on their toes when I talk about deleting dating apps. The group of girls who say, I'm too awkward to meet people in real life. I don't know how to talk to people in person. Dating apps are not making your life easier. I know you may think because you're doing it from the comfort of your home that they are, but they're not. While I don't think you're vulnerable because you didn't develop communication skills, or maybe you may be lacking some type of communication skills, these men will think that you are. This is not my design and this is not my choice, okay? This is just the world that we are a part of. Now I'm going to move into my reasons for why I don't like dating apps. First of all, have you ever seen your friends be torn up over the most medium ugly ass man? Yeah. If a man is already medium ugly, he's probably already thriving IRL. And if a man is actually attractive, girl, why do you think he's on a dating app? What are the chances that he is so attractive and just so busy, so successful that he does not actually already get that unana every day IRL and is not flirting it up with the whole office? Did the Tinder swindler not teach us as a nation that men who are attractive, rich, and overly complimentary and fast to fall in love are not on free dating apps. They are not accessible to the wide ass public. And if they are, girl, you is probably being scammed. Even cops on TikTok will say, if a man is overly complimentary, that is a red flag. We're basically walking face first into these Tinder swindlers. My next reason why I cancel dating apps is because it's a low effort space that attracts low effort people. It demands nothing of men. Like, have you noticed that these men don't even put out the filters? They don't even fill out the bios. They don't even actually tell you something about themselves. Did you notice how many of these men's profiles all look the fucking same? Between the prompts about not wanting a girl who takes herself too seriously, the pineapple on pizza, or the fish picture, you would really think that they're all reading the same exact rule book and they're taking the same exact notes. If that man doesn't have his religion filled out, if he doesn't have his politics filled out, if he doesn't have his workplace accurately filled out, and if he doesn't actually tell you whether he's a smoker, non-smoker, or whether he wants kids, or if he actually wants a relationship, if he has all these problems problematic ass things left purposely unfilled blank or as vanilla beans and creams types of responses like moderate girl he's a hoe he's an absolute hoe on fire first of all why are you hiding you little bitch second of all no i'm not just gonna find out when i talk to you this is not a 1-800 chat with free cutie service where i'm actually interested in you let me decide whether i like you based off your profile of values or go away These guys who are hiding themselves are doing it on purpose. They're trying to be chameleons to you. Another thing too with this low effort space, the old photos. I'm so sorry, but anything after one year in man time, that might as well be 10 years, okay? He could literally have gained 50 pounds and have a whole receding hairline or balding ass head. No, these guys don't actively take pictures, but we're expected to. We're expected to have like selfies on the spot, like ready to send them as soon as we meet them. Fuck no. You know that's a paid job, right? But they're expecting us to show up to dating apps for free with that energy. Mmm, no. And then even worse, they want to offer the coffee dates and the drink dates, which by the way, I have a new opinion on that. I used to say, hey, you know, I'm not against the drink date and bar hopping. Now I am. Now I am because I realize that for a drink date, like a guy who's actually down to do a drink date, he knows I'm probably going to get drunk. And he knows that he's probably going to have an opportunity. Like I've never had a drink date that didn't end with a guy trying to take me back to his place. So because of that, I'm so sorry, but I now see drink dates as like the predator first date. Like especially if they're not trying to give me some dinner or food or a bite. Like they're just going to let me get drunk. No, bye. Gross. Sicko. So yeah, to conclude this point, no bios, no actual information about them on these profiles. They're on here because it's free. Um, it attracts so many of them in masses. They have their old ass photos. Uh, If they do actually have a picture, you know, they're usually only posting one. They're just trying to share as little information as possible. And these guys don't actually want to date seriously. My next point about why I'm canceling dating apps is who is actually benefiting? Who is winning the dating app race space? To me, it's the pick me chicks, but a very specific brand of pick me chick. 
It's the one who's gullible to men that are users, men who are dusties. These women are also willing to wait. They're willing to fight. They'll tolerate antics and tomfoolery, especially the type that comes with the men in the dating app spaces. Okay, if you know, you know. Um, also, they're willing to settle in looks. They're willing to settle in the treatment that they get. And they're also willing to settle in intellect. These are women who have been broken down and they are victims of misogyny. I'm not trying to make them feel bad, but this is who is actually winning in these spaces. And by winning, I mean making a man into a boyfriend or even a husband out of this hellhole dystopian dating space. Who do I think is winning on the male side? The liars. The guys who know that it's easier to lie to you because you don't know them through a mutual or you don't have enough information to do a background check or um, guys who want to manipulate you. Guys who know that you have no idea what they are about so they can just say whatever. None of these online dating spaces are running background checks and checking if these dudes even have domestic violence histories. They leave that to us to do our due diligence. So yeah, these websites are just letting these men frolic around having access to a pool of women. So moving on from that scary ass point, let's go to the next one. Another reason why I do not like dating apps and I am canceling them. They are a source of irritation. Um, yeah, they're frustrating to deal with because once you start swiping on a guy and it's like, okay, yeah, we matched. Now you got to worry if he's actually going to be courteous to you. Now you got to worry if he's only going to like try to do a coffee date or if he's going to try to be rated R or do something inappropriate. There's just so many barriers of worrying. It's frustrating. I don't like living with that daily anticipation of like, I hope today one acts right. And no matter what, women have been screaming about men's behavior and how they should conduct themselves in online spaces. They do not give a fuck. They think that that is a place where they can safely act like that which no no there is no place on earth where you can safely act like that and look maybe like you know don't be on the dating apps every single day of your life but when you are you are constantly dealing with that cortisol stress of a guy potentially pissing you off or trying your life with some low effort ass behavior or an insultingly bad date and now my next point if you actually put what you're looking for and you don't just put I like tacos or don't hate me if I don't take myself too seriously they will either fight you, be mean to you, act condescending, act upset, or they'll just act like, oh, well, I forgot to read your profile. We were just getting along in this conversation so good. Or even worse, okay, um, they'll lie to you and they will use that information to shape shift into you. So yeah, between the liars, the cheapos, the broke boys, the guys who use it exclusively as a place to hook up, the men who go there because they absolutely never learn, which by the way, have you ever dated a man from a dating app who was well-trained, who wasn't like already an athlete who just had hella game? Because to me, it seems to be the batch of men who decided to never learn or the ones who are hard-headed or the ones who are just straight up in the reject barrel bottom of the bottom. Because of this using a dating app is like trying to bite into a piece of a moldy apple and thinking that I am somehow going to be able to eat around all the moldy parts and by this point you're probably thinking Fleeksy it sounds like you just only go after the guys that you're attracted to um yes bitch duh so should you and guess what even if I did go for the guy who I thought was the most attractive I bet there would be 20 girls right now who would be like ew he's so ugly why do you like him you know what's worse than getting played by a guy that you're actually attracted to getting played by a guy that looks like Dobby. Like men will actually be shocked. They'll be like, wow, women would, would rather be alone for the rest of their lives rather than just find a guy who loves them. Yes, the fuck I would. Because just because you love me does not mean that I love you. It has to be mutual. Yes, I'm a human being. And look, if you're the type of dating app user who's like waking up first thing in the morning, swiping for 15 to 30 minutes and then doing it again at lunch and then doing it again at dinner, you're basically wasting like an hour to an hour and 30 minutes of your day on dating apps alone. You are not saving time. The crazy thing is that most people are meeting other people in like natural environments where they already hang out every day. They're not taking an extra hour and 30 minutes to like exclusively meet people to date. And then I know it's going to be like, oh, well, what if I don't want to leave my house and go out and do things? Oh, well, then, OK, what you want to go out to parties? Because guess what's going to happen when you go out to parties? You meet men who like parties. When you go out to clubs, you meet men who like to go to clubs. Is that what you want to deal with? You want to fight with the man who's going to be trying to go out to clubs? Back in 2012, when dating apps weren't popular, the time that I knew the most men, I had the most dudes that I naturally organically knew, it was because I was going to coffee shops and restaurants and like places to eat and hang out at the same time for like certain days of the week. And I would just get to know the other regulars who would also spend their time there. Yeah, I know. 
It's crazy. It's like if you do things that you would do in private out in public, you meet other people who like to do these things out in public. But we have three different viruses floating around in the air anyway. So um, why don't you use this time to become an influencer online or hone in on some special skill and be indoors and keep yourself safe for now because it's truly not worth it. And I know so much of this sounds like a joke, but I truly believe that because these places are free, because these places demand nothing of men, because these men come on there with their old ass photos and expect us to have these brand new ones, and because we're like potentially dealing with criminals and liars, thieves, thugs, whatever. No, I just, I'm fucking ill. I do not like dating apps. And the way that like most of them are specifically there to hook up and they're all hiding information on their profile. Like if I were to hold every single standard that I just depicted in today's podcast episode to a dating app experience, I would literally maybe have one guy to swipe on. And I would have to be making hella exceptions and cutting corners on like information that's not there or pictures that I find exceptionally shitty. And this was one of the first things I meant to bring up. But straight up, guys tell guys, if you want to hook up, if you want to get something fast and quick and easy and just fucking chuck, you go here. They say like, this is the spot that you go to. So when you have people who are using the app for entirely different experiences operating in this way, whether or not, whether you think you are participating in this activity, you are subjecting yourself to these types of dudes. And guys who are actively training each other every day online how to be the most manipulative that they can possibly be. And I truly believe in my heart of hearts that the reason why we all have the same experiences and we all have the same stories and we all have the same traumas from these spaces is because this is who they attract. And no, this is not your cue to get on there, start trolling them, sending them all crazy paragraphs and trying to tell them all off. Because if you were actually trying to hurt these men on these places, you would actually just not respond. I know that sounds so boring and so broccoli and spinach, but deadass, a lot of the men who are on dating apps are irritated because they either never get matches or they never get replies. That is the true way to hurt them. If you are actually trying to start a fight with them, what you are actually doing is exciting them and giving them something to screenshot and send to their boys. Thinking that you are hurting them by sending them a long paragraph is just giving them material to call you crazy with. And look, maybe you are telling them true things. Maybe these things are real. They don't see it that way. If the goal is to hurt them, you're not actually doing what you think you're doing. And look, this whole idea that maybe you're going to meet your dream man on a dating app, maybe he is out there because I saw one little story that worked or I know one person where it worked out. That is what is keeping dating apps alive. I was going back and forth on making this podcast for so long for the last six months because I was telling myself maybe I do want to be on them. Maybe I might change my mind. Maybe I'm just going through a phase. And then I redownloaded them, kept it up for like mm, a week or two, you know, while I was in Miami a little bit while I was back in my hometown. And then I decided, no, this is heinous. In fact, like, oh my God, I matched with the guy. I told him that I was moving, which by the way, I'm actually staying. And he was like, oh, well, maybe we can just smash. I'm open to that too. And I'm like, um, smashing in this economy. So then I blocked him and then I went to the gym. And then when I went to the gym, guess who was there? It was his ass. And wow, imagine that acting that way online like it's not real life. They literally don't think it's real life. Oh, can I bring up that part too? I've talked to so many men who think that the women on dating apps are not real people. And no, I don't mean bots. Like they don't actually perceive us as human beings like real human beings with lives and days, days that they can ruin or days that they can interfere with, with, um, you know, last minute plans. So this is my personal list of reasons for why I hate dating apps, why I do not want to use them, why I feel like they don't benefit me, and why I feel like they primarily stress me out more than they add to my life. Feel free to take it as comedy, but I'm dead ass being so serious. I feel like dating apps came around at that time when we were getting all of those movies like No Strings Attached or Friends with Benefits, and it just perfectly came around at the time when hookup culture was being pushed onto women at like top tier peak independent woman pick me culture where we didn't even question being a pick me. They try to advertise it for women, but it's just so clearly in the benefit of men and like the worst type of exploitative type of men. And I'm sure that if you've lived somewhere long enough, you probably see the same like 20 dudes. Depending on how long you've been in a certain town using that app, assuming that like maybe they also haven't moved out. I know coming into this topic, a lot of people start pulling out percentages about top 20%, top 10%, chads, this, that. No, for me, it's the sheer fact that this is a space that men use to exploit, pillage, and conquer women. And um, yeah, I don't feel bad about that. That's enough of a reason for me to not be in that space. And the whole fact that they're hiding and being little scaredy bitches to like actually share their real opinions or that they pretend to be vanilla beans and cream, we're already not going to get along. They're already not my type. 
I keep getting asked about the dating apps and um, this is my official opinion piece, right? Like I don't want to have to keep explaining myself why I don't like dating apps anymore. I also have some TikTok posts where I talk about it, but they're not on any particular playlist. You just have to go back to my feed in like January or February to find that. Specifically in 2022 for the people who are watching this from the future. Another thing that I talked about on TikTok that's relevant to this episode, I promise it's okay to not be on a dating app. It is okay to not be romantically pursuable. You are not a loser or crazy or mentally unwell because you are not a romantic option to men or actively placing yourself in the firing line of being a romantic option to men. I promise you can just live your life just existing and doing the things that bring you value. And I promise that the men that come in and out of your life do not add value to it or take your value with them when they leave you. While a relationship can bring meaning into your life, it is not the meaning of your life. That, my friends, is codependency. Another thing that I mentioned on that TikTok, when you're suddenly like, hey, you know what, I'm just not going to be a romantic option, people will start treating you like one without you even wanting that for yourself. Don't worry, you'll still get that type of attention. And it's actually going to be so annoying because you're going to be like, why are you looking at me that way when I didn't even put myself out there like that? So that is today's podcast episode. I hope that you guys liked it. I know it was one of my shyster ones, and I know that we really took like a humble mood towards the end. If you like this content and you want to support me making more of it, send me five stars on Apple or Spotify. You know, if you want to support me for free, leave a nice comment too, preferably. And if you want to comment directly under today's episode, I upload them all on YouTube under the official Fleekazoid YouTube channel. Or if you want to support me for $2, you can on Patreon. Also, I'm on TikTok. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, and I'm literally everywhere a social media channel can be found under the name of Fleeksy. Go check me out. Give me a follow. And with that, that is the end of the episode. I hope everyone has a good day. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.